This time on the show, Mubix joins us to add persistence to our penetration testing with a little Metasploit, Microsoft, and IP version 6. Yeah. Yeah, hook me up, I'm ready. This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Got a great idea? It all starts with a great domain. Domain.com. Dice.com, the career hub for tech. And GoToAssist Express, support smarter with GoToAssist Express. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen and this is your weekly dose of Technolust. Thanks for joining us today. We've got an excellent show. As you might imagine, we are going to be joined here by none other than our great friend Mubix, aka Rob Fuller. You may know him from room362.com. What's up, Rob? What's up, man? We're breaking the internet again, aren't we? Always. Yeah, that's what you do, man. You, uh, you make the lights blink that aren't supposed to, right? Try to. And our, our friend Colleen here behind one of the cameras hey, Colleen. is the one that uh, makes the new lights blink and hopefully between <laughs> the three of us we can try to show you why those lights are blinking. If that made no sense to you, welcome to an inside joke. But what's up, man? Not much. Yeah. We're going to be talking about IPv6, right? Yeah, we just finished a cool. great segment on uh, DNS brute forcing and fun yeah. stuff like that. I figured, all right, we've talked about DNS. We've talked about IP stuff a lot in the past, but you're bringing something way new to the table so here. So IPv, it's a natural transition because IPv6 is really, really heavily dependent on DNS. Yeah? How yeah. So? so? Well, actually, before we even get into that, because you know we're talking about internet protocol here. Right. Okay. And the current internet protocol that most of us are using on our little home routers and all that fun stuff is IP version 4. The, the addresses that we're used to between right. 0.0.0.0 and 255.255.255.255, which there are like 4 billion of. Who, why would we ever need more than 4 billion IP addresses, Rob? 4 billion? Is, yeah, 40 billion. Four bi no, 4 billion? 4 million? 4 billion. 4 billion. 4, 4 billion. Crap. That is what it is. Wrong. Yeah, no, that's what it is, dude. <laughs> As somebody, that, anyway, yes. You know nothing. You know nothing. But you know what? It's really cool because you can actually, un you can remember those, right? Like, kind of. 192.168.1.100 is really easy to remember. Yeah, I can remember that. I can right. say that over the phone. But you're not going to remember 2000 or 200 or 2001 colon 58A6 whatever and then... 128 bits worth of is is that just is that the difference is it just because I mean I've seen IPv6 addresses and they just like like really long IP addresses with hex because they've yep. got A through F as well so you throw in the A through F you throw in the, the more octets there and then boom you've got like really long like how many addresses are we talking about here in uh, IP version six thirty five trillion thirty five trillion so, yeah so you have 128 bits that you can twiddle. Mm. <laughs> okay, that's one way to put it. And if you were to map that over the landscape of the Earth, you would have uh, enough IP addresses for every two square inches or something uh, that I've read that sounds okay. really enormous like that. <laughs> it works for me, man. Uh, those I can't remember, except for when they are shortened, like colon, colon, one. But, okay. uh, but regardless of those, wh wh why is IP6 important? Hell, what was wrong with IP5, right? No, I'm joking. I'm joking. All right, so IPv6 is important because we're supposedly running out of space. Yes. When everybody's using like internal 10 dot networks and 9192 networks now, mm -hmm. so it's not really running out of space, but we supposedly are. So okay. uh, we've been actually transitioning to IPv6, supposedly, for like 10 years. Right, well, I, our, we've got plenty of IP addresses here at the uh, you know the hack garage you know we've got a, mm -hmm. our addresses scheme is 10.13.37.x so we could have 254 devices on this network before we'd run into problems and that's well, not really going to i mean we got the 10 network so it's a class a so okay we well if we it. wanted to we could have a lot you right. know it is a class a a 10.x.x.x or we could do a 172.16.x.x or a 192.168.x.x you know like right but that, it's behind a net, mm -hmm. and it's not public. What does that mean? I'm asking these questions because I'm the Watson here, but no, what does that mean? Well, so you can't do any, you can't put, have anything access it directly unless you do port forwarding or something like that. So, yeah, you have the IP space, and you probably don't want anyone in anyways, but say you did, say you wanted to run your network and have your own services. So going. are you saying with IP version 6, it's a public IP address every time or something like Not that? Not every time, you can, you can still have NAT, mm -hmm. but um, you have so many IPs in that, like the 35 trillion, right? You can actually have 
all addressable, routable IPs so inside of your enterprise. So everyone can be like one of those lucky SOBs, like the people over at uh, UC Berkeley up the road, where they all get public IPs. And nice. Isn't that fancy, right? Yes. Run some BitTorrent servers from your dorm room. That's what's up. <laughs> well, yeah, so they're, they're the ones making it, it so that we run out of IPv4, Berkeley. Bastages. Yeah. All right, well, okay. Can we get this in? I mean, yeah, sure. You and I, we've all we, we've gone to Linux, right? Mm -hmm. um, still using the Windows for the editing and the fun stuff like that. Right. What versions of Windows are we going to find IP version six on? Because well, that to, relates to the pen testing. Service back to and above uh, of, of XP. So XP, you have to install it. Uh, Vista and Windows Seven come with it, defaultly enabled. So nice. With Beautiful. Them. Okay. So we can get it in XP. Now, what, what's involved in that? Like, uh, is, is it just a couple of commands? Yeah, one command. Nice. And, and is just like, boom, you do that, and then instantly they're public on the internet? Or, or is there tunneling involved? Or what's this, the special sauce that it enables someone to be able to you know, turn on a, uh, an IP6 on their machine and then have that become... A, a public IP address that anyone can use, regardless of their NAT. <laughs> well, nice transition. Um, no, so if you turn on IPv6, you're only going to get an FE uh, address. So that address is actually link local, which is a certain type of IPv6 address. And that will only be accessible inside of your network. So it's like a 192 address. OK. Um, but mm. what we're going to be talking about today is Terado which is a completely different um, setup. It was, I don't remember exactly who started it, but Microsoft runs a server, and it allows someone to try out IPv6 um, without having to ask for an address from IANA or someone who gives it out. Dude, and, and I, I feel bad for Aaron and IANA and all those people that have to deal with yeah, those, those exactly 35 trillion out. addresses. Yeah, it, it's somebody's responsibility, but that's cool that Microsoft would offer us a yeah. way to have fun and experiment and play as we all so should nice be. So nice of them. Yeah. <laughs> you say that with a smirk, right? right. I, well, and, and you say that with a smirk for a reason because as a professional penetration tester, which makes me a really fun thing to put on your business card, um, how does IP6 version, uh, yes, Merlot, how does uh, IP version 6 <laughs> come into play when it comes to the... Uh, Okay, so Terado, testing. so Terado is set up so that you can have your own IPv6 address and you can try it out and, and access the IPv6 internet, right? Um, mm -hmm. So, wh why is that bad? Yeah, basically, what's wrong with that? I mean, everybody basically should, like, gives you a public with, address. Yeah, okay, paint me a picture here. Why would that be an issue? It gives you a public address. Okay, to so... To whatever box you turn Terado on. Right, so Janice and Accounting, right? All right, so She's, me at 192.168.1.1. Yeah. Or 100. Yeah. Um, now I have a public IP address, which equals NAT equals nothing. Yeah, yeah, but 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 that goes still, away. But you're still behind your corporate firewall, your your no, router or no, whatever. No. Isn't that going? No. No. This is six. But to there four. are rules in place, Mo. We, we have we <laughs> we block Facebook into MySpace so you can get some productivity done. This and is we six have to some more tunneling. Oh. So so it goes through the firewalls. What right. You're saying. So. So basically, well, Microsoft has a back door in it. <laughs> it's a back door, man. That's great. Sort of. Sort of, yeah. Um, so since July, since July of this, uh, 2010 or 2009, mm -hmm. I remember it in July. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so they enabled what is called IPv6 protection mode. Because it wasn't protected before? Because What's a public IP address? Well, yeah can be accessed over 445, there's right? A, well, yeah, there's a reason that we put our machines so, behind NAT routers, right, because so, we don't want, especially a Windows <laughs> machine, you don't want to plug your cable modem directly into your Windows machine, because port right. 443, as we know for uh, RPC... And, and Terado is exactly that. Oh. Oh, it, no. So, it's you like, just plug in, so you do that. You put your Windows machine on the internet. You put your Windows machine on the IPv6 on, internet. On the IPv6 internet with its port 139 and its port 440. Right. Four, four, four fifty five. Four, thank you. That one. Wow. <clears throat> Whatever. Yeah. No. no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, that's that's no good. So that, is that what you're talking about with the protection right. mode? Right. So they uh, applied a patch. So if you are not up to date, you might not. This this will be even worse for you. 
Yeah, because if um, somebody scans all 35 trillion addresses, they might find you and pop your box. Right, so that's why IPv6 is so heavily um, uh, dependent on DNS. So Not bad, oh, man. Just as a real quick tangent. Sure. Zone transfer Yeah. on an IPv6 enabled network. How you get would be all of the IPv6 addresses, oh. all the quad A records. Uh-huh. And in a uh, capture the flag tournament, that's how I got onto their network because they had all of it IPv6 enabled. You zone transferred initially right off the bat. You so had you every machine. Their, you see, you didn't just have that. I had all their you addresses. Had every machine. I had every machine's you had, addresses. You had everything from the the, the little chintzy NAS device yep. to and to, they, wow. And that is a really good transition into talking about firewalls. A lot of the firewalls don't have IPv6 protection. So you're saying on like, by default. So a saying, lot of them have it. But most of it's but not some on like old do. ass uh, watch guard firebox right. from like 2002. Not, not gonna, like I know not for gonna experience, know about it. but yeah, no, not gonna care. So if its rules and everything are set for an IP4 address and it sees this, it's just the package is just gonna flow. Just lets it go, dude. That's sexy. All right, but we're gonna get back to Terado. So Terado is six to four tunneling. Uh huh. So IPv6. It just translates to, it. Right. It goes over UDP, and we'll actually talk out to. A Microsoft server. Hmm. So ipv6.terado.microsoft.com. Okay. Nice. That's so great of them to offer that for us to have some fun. Right. So we're going to have some fun here on this show. We, we, got, we got a Windows XP box just sitting waiting to be penetration tested by... Uh, Found. Yeah, I was going to say something else, but then okay. I realized there are kid, kids watching. And uh, so, yeah, stick around. So we're going to pop some box in. And uh, before we do that, though, we're going to take a quick break. And considering that this is A block, I'm going to just go ahead and, by default, throw it over to Shannon, find out what's going on with trivia this week, and then thank a sponsor, and we'll be right back. Got it. Last week's trivia question was, this member of the Homebrew Computer Club is also known as Crunchman, or Captain Crunch. And his name is John Draper, the epic phone freak. If you want to win some Hack5 swag, go over to hack5.org slash trivia and answer the following question. This query and response protocol based on Finger had its origin in ARPANET nickname protocol. Hmm, we'll be right back after a brief word from our sponsor. DICE has the tech jobs you want. Visit DICE.com and search thousands of tech jobs to find yours. The companies you want to work for are on DICE. DICE has cool jobs like this, Senior Software Engineer. VMware, the global leader in virtualization and cloud infrastructure, is looking for a software engineer to manage, design, and implement Java-based business logic for SVA server static configurations. VMware is one of the companies on the DICE talent network where you can connect directly with their hiring managers. Visit DICE.com DTN to find out how. Network with recruiting decision makers, research top companies, and control which companies do and don't see your resume by visiting the recently launched DICE Talent Network at dice.com slash DTN. DICE gives you the tools to find the jobs you're looking for. Tech jobs, tech tips, tech talk. If it's not tech, it's not on DICE. Mubix, we meet again. I have brought you a Windows XP machine that you can exploit with your Leet tools. Yeah. How will we maintain <laughs> persistence on this machine? <laughs> can't do that. You can't? All right, well, whatever, man. Like, check it out, right? So you've popped another XP box because, you know, it's 2005. And, and you want to stay on that machine. And you know what? I say that, but this, this wouldn't matter. It's if called it was persistence. Like, it's, it's called persistence. Right. Why, what's, what's important about persistence? What does that even mean as so, a penetration tester? All right, so... It, Say you get a client side, right? So a client side is where you send an email or get them to surf to a web page or whatever, right? Um, so you're targeting Janice in accounting and you totally know that she likes lolcats and you sent her a link and she clicked it and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, Google needs to update the blah, blah, blah. Well, then it'll have the little picture of the lolcat and say, you must update Google to, to view the lolcat. To view the lolcat. So you click. Suck her for it. Run. Nice. And then her day just got a lot more interesting, right? Right. But she doesn't know it. No. But you want to stay on that machine because it's an important machine, right? Right, and there's a bunch of different ways. Uh, Sysinternal's auto runs um, tool allows you to look at all your like things that automatically start up, which yeah. is a really good reference for penetration testers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there you go. Well, congrats to you, uh, Mark, and all of your awesome Sysinternal's tools. Yeah, they're awesome. I, I quite like PSExec. 
Agreed. So okay, so there are a lot of methods, as as you would say, that uh, to maintain persistence. And, and right. when we say persistence, you mean a connection to that machine, a shell on that machine. You want to no, be able it doesn't to... actually necessarily a connection. Really? So um, buying shells, mm -hmm. um, the old way of doing things, right? Right. Um, is to create a a, a a service on the machine. Sure. Whether it's so netcat it, right, or net whatever cat. you may so, be. Yeah. So netcat listening on. Port 9,000. 9,000, whatever. Or something high. 1337. 1337 is like the default. Wouldn't know anything about that. So, yeah, look on YouTube for mm -hmm. Netcat Show. Yeah, more ways. There we go. So, Bind Show. So, that's the old way of doing things. Then, then um, uh, Metasploit started doing like reverse shells, and well, there's other reverse shells before that. But, anyways, so that was the new way of doing things. That way you get it to connect to you. Mm -hmm. Awesome, cool stuff. I like that idea. But, but there's some problems with that, right? Yeah. So the firewalls in place, right? You have damn firewalls always getting in the way. Plus, um, a lot of firewalls or a lot of IDSs flag on the um, CMDs, like right. If an intrusion banner. detection system notices over clear text that all of a sudden a C colon backslash Windows right. Waka is showing up, they're like, "Hey, does someone pop a box in, or am I just right. and then getting that, command line to here?" And that persistence method has another problem. You can't. You can't connect to it whenever you want. It has to connect to you. You have to wait for it. So we're going to show you how bind shells can make a comeback. Okay, let's make it sexy. Let's let's go ahead. And this is going to maintain it so that you will be able to reconnect to this box. Right. Whether it's rebooted. Yeah. Rebooted, whether it's new physically network. moved. Or. Uh oh. Hey, don't don't you dare. All right. <laughs> so you um, get hit by the pineapple. We get you. We get a shell. You, However way. However and, you want, yeah. And you want to get... At the coffee shop, at the airport. Right. The places that we do these things. Get persistence. You don't want to have to wait for it to connect back to you because you'll have to set up something that either auto runs some way or... Yeah, because, you, know. you know, you, you owned them when you were on a layover for Chicago and then they're going right. back to Nebraska and you're like, you know, I still fancy that box. Right. So other persistence methods... Say they go into a network and it automatically starts beaking and trying to get to you, right? Yeah, that's going to be no good. That's going to be setting off alarms. Right. You, you might not want it. You might want to connect to it, have it um, so that you want to connect to it like at midnight or whatever. And IP6 is what's going to allow us to make this all sexy, right? True. Okay, well, and Terado. Remember how we said... Yeah, yeah. Terado is... It gives you a public address. Oh, Microsoft. How we love thee. So... Cool. Walk me through it. Like, okay, so I've got this set up. I've got the idea. The, 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 the picture has been painted as to why and how. Right. So why don't we get practical now? Uh, what are we using? All right. So we got Ubuntu. But the very first thing on your Ubuntu install is you got to have... Um, IPv6 on your Ubuntu machine. Okay. So at get install Merido. And Merido is the. Merido. Yep. What's Merido? Merido is the. Terado. Unix slash Linux slash OS X version of Terado. Beautiful. So, so once we have that, we're set to go. We've got an IP6, right? right? The only thing is, like, if you're going to be doing this for a penetration test, mm -hmm. you. you really, really don't want your Merido giving you a public IP yeah, all the might, time. That might be an issue. <laughs> right. So yeah. what you want to do is tell it on, this is on Ubuntu, to not, oops, Merido remove. So this, this, is, this command is removing it from automatically starting up. Oh, good. Because every time we boot up, we don't want Merido. So we're going to have to start that service. Uh, manually whenever we want an IP6 address on right. the Merido, and then we'll be able to connect to our bitch that we owned earlier on Terado. Right. And we really don't care what the, the IP or the IPv6 address that we got back is. Mm -hmm. um, you can see it via uh, if config, but since it's a bind shell, we're connecting to it, so we don't really need to know it. Right. So it's that 2001 address there? Correct. Um, so Terado and Merido get the 2001 addresses. Okay. So it's 2001 colon and yada, yada, yada. You've got a bunch of stuff. Right. And that's going to allow us to talk to, to what now? Now, we popped that box. Actually, you haven't clicked on it. Oh. Do we need to do that now? Yes. All right. So I'm going to be uh, Janice in accounting here and get and owned. So I already have a resource file, which is a... Um, a file that basically is a script that says, run this, then this, then this, and this. It's a bash script from um, 
uh, MSF console. Okay, well, I'm just going to make things easy. And hey, um, Janice was a noob and totally clicked, yo, let me get owned, right? No, I haven't started it yet. Oh, okay, well, Janice will wait for you then. <laughs> So go monk, go cow, go cow, go cow, go cow, go cow. Let's get the cow. Oh, no cow. All right. All right. So you we're ready. Okay. So, so what we've done over here is we started a um, a Java based multi handler, and you're gonna click that, and we're gonna get a show. All right. Oh hey, lolcats. Now the Java, um, the jar file works on NUS. So this is XP here. Uh, but it could be like a like Linux box or a Mac or right. So if it was a Mac, we could actually do the exact same thing with port install Merido. Nice. Yeah. Okay, and same thing with Linux, like you said. So, so, so it's this Merido attack, for everything except for Windows and this. This attack is OS agnostic. Oh, I love that. You know, cross-platform goodness is what it's all about, people. All right, we got a session. Nice. Cool. So, so what do we do now? We wait for my shell to work. So, sessions, it's administrator on new PC. Session stack I goes into session one. And none of this is really important yet. But now we in, But you have a shell. We have a shell. Okay. So, so we, this is the initial time of the ownage, right? Right. So, this is the we have a shell. For the first time. Right. And we're like, you know, it's a tasty shell, but I'd kind of like to have it later. Right, and you can actually script this with interpreter scripts. You can you can Ooh. actually get this going like real that. easy. All right, but we're going to do it without the scripts. Let's do it manually so that we can learn it. Right, so we'll right. show you. So what's the first part? I mean, obviously this machine doesn't have IP6, right? Net sh is the command. Love net sh. So you can either go into net sh or or do it straight from the line. So right, I usually use it to do set firewall IPv6 op mode disable. Install. So net sh interface IPv6 install. It'll say okay. In a second. So this enables IPv6 on all your. Uh, that was it. You just installed IPv6. So there's yep. not, no no big hassle. Boom. Nope. All right. Cool. NetSH int IPv6 Terado or I'm sorry set Terado. And it's actually different on on Windows 7. So um, Terado is is even more built in, I guess. So mm -hmm. it actually has its own category inside of NetSH. Okay. So. Yes. No worries. <laughs> Teredo Enterprise Client. Now, there are two options, uh, Enterprise Client and Client. Mm -hmm. So if you set it to Client, it will not get a public IP. It will not set, do Teredo or Teredo inside of a domain. Oh, no. That's, that's going to be a huge problem. No. Enterprise. What, what do you mean? They're, they're, well, if they're part of a domain, that's like half the fun boxes you'd want to exploit anyway. Well, there are some instances where you want it, where you want it not to do that. So, yeah. say if you want your bind shell to not get an IPv6 address when you're when they're on the domain, right? You just want to have it so that whenever they go home or offsite, nice, right? So, yeah. Okay. So, so there are instances where you actually want it to be on client. Is that a difference form. between the version of it now and before? You said that it used to be like like not protected, and now it's the protected version. Or how does that come? No, that that doesn't that okay. doesn't matter at all. Um, so we've just initialized it. Right. All right. And then what is it just going to get it uh, like it. a tooth? Well, how do we know it's got an address? Well, you just you can either wait for a second. Um, what it's doing is it's probing out for different NAT types. Okay. So, so is it doing kind of like a DHCP on Teredo? Sort of. Sort of. It's it's seeing how it can get out. It's figuring out how it can get out. <laughs> no way. So yeah. it's doing all the work for you. Right. <laughs> so we can actually see what's going on if we do a NAT. And, IPv6, show Terado. And what we're looking for is a qualified, and there it is. So it has a qualified state. So, so and state equals qualified means it, it pulled up an IPv6, public IPv6 address so from Microsoft, and it's good. So we can just see that right now, just by doing like what, an IP config? Mm -hmm. Like, is that easy? config slash all. Oh, gorgeous. I can already see all those Fs and happy Whoa. hex codes. Dude, that, that is so delicious. So, we, so you need we that. That's definitely important. want to save that because right. that is that is not easy to remember. No, unfortunately, it is not. Okay, so it's in your clipboard. Say like this machine moves, you move whatever. Right. Now um, there is another setting that I can't recall off the top of my head, but it's in NetSH IPv6. 
um, that will allow it to not be randomized, randomized. So it will get the same one every time. Oh, you would probably want it to be a static, yes. Right. Okay. So is that, well, NetSH um, help IPv6? Right. That'll probably give you all the info you need. All right. So we are. So we've left the shell. Hmm? We've left the shell now. No, we haven't left the shell because we haven't uploaded our, our bind shell. Okay. We haven't. So we have to actually make that. So. Payload. Windows, because we know. Interpreter. Reverse. I'm sorry. Bind. Bind. IPv6. TCP, and we don't have, we don't specify a host because we want it to just bind on colon colon, which means everything. Everything, yeah. Right. All right. So L, so port, L port. What do you want to have a port? One three three seven. That sounds okay. like fun. It's not like we're using it for anything else. Okay. So, and we're just going to say bind.exe just because it doesn't matter. Make it happy. All right. And if you were actually on a pen test, you'd want it to be a little less obvious. That's a bit conspicuous, yeah. Right, so... Help.exe. Help.exe, a lot, a lot of malware does SPC host.exe. Of course. So we got it. We're good. Okay. Let me screen back in. Upload our bind.exe. Done. Where's that go? Like the root? No, it's actually in your downloads folder. <laughs> nice. Might want to, yeah. Can, right, oh, well, it yeah. Depends. I mean, sometimes your downloads folder has so much stuff in it, it's going to blend in. Sure. Uh, well, yeah, it would on mine, definitely. Um, you definitely, if you're on a pen test, you definitely don't want to go into System32. It might blend in there, but every AV on the planet looks in there. Okay. Hmm. Good to know. So, uh, da -da 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 -da. execute. So we've uploaded it, we've execute. Execute hidden, channelize, we don't want to interact with it, and bind.exe. Ah, bindy. Bindy. Done. So right now, on your host, yeah, bind.exe is just waiting. And I'm not going to notice anything, because it's totally hidden. Nope. We've lost our shell. Oh, no. Oops, so how are we ever going to get back? Because you're not even on this network, are you? I mean, you're connected no, via... No, I'm actually connected you... through the MiFi back here. So you've got your own... You bring your own internet, of do. course. Right? Um, so you're on a so... 3G network, totally separate from the hack garage here. Yep. And you're going to reconnect to this guy, right? Mm -hmm. So we s we're already in multi-handler. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can show you the options if you want. Um, so that's our stuff. I don't care about the IP because it sure. changes. So set... Payload. So we set it to the same payload that we already made, right? All right. Bind. So used to doing reverse. Yeah. Well, that would be the IP4 way to do it. Set. So our our host is. Uh, yeah, that really long that. IP6 <laughs> address. Okay. And, and then when the port, port, L port is well, 1337. It says L port, but it's really R port. Sure. So, but it's the local port. It's the port, port that we're expecting it to be in. Yeah, yeah. Right. So 1337. You ready? Which is totally going to like throw flags and if the firewall would even notice, but the firewall doesn't because it's IP6. Exactly. <laughs> you want to hit? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Oh no, we're just totally hacked by the enter. And there we go, hacking the Gibson, right? Yep. Nice. So, interpret open one, session one, open to that address, to that address, all over Microsoft. So, you're not even on the network because you're on your own 3G and you're just using the Microsoft provided IP6 that you have. The 6 to uh, 4 tunnel. The IP version 6 <laughs> address that Microsoft has provided to your victim here. Right. So, we both got IPv6 addresses through Microsoft and we use that to connect. And then done. Yeah, done, done, no done, firewall done. needed. That's beautiful, Rob. Man, thank you. That's, no just, that's, that's really something that should be in everybody's toolkit.
Definitely. Now, people can find out more about that kind of stuff over at Practical Expo Exploitation, correctly? Yes, um, that's where um, I do videos and we got a couple um, other contributors. So there's a bunch of different things, including like DNS brute forcing stuff um, and like PHP shells and, and different. The, the premise for Practical Exploitation is to um, go from zero to like 60. So instead of having the video that shows you how to use this one thing, yeah. it goes, Okay, you can use this, then this, then this, then this, and right, this, right, and get right. there. I love that idea, man. That's really, really cool. I love it, and you got to check it out just you know to like get your technical on and watch the the, yeah. the fine shell happen, man. That's very cool. And of course, everybody can still find all the fun movic stuff over at room362.com, right? Mm -hmm. Dude, thank you for coming all the way like the freaking three thousand miles or so just to like pop a box and that's now like right there, virtually. Yeah, virtually. And now that I have the address, I can go home and still have it. Now that he has the address, <laughs> speaking of addresses, there's a, uh, a certain IP address that I need to go take care of okay. from the last episode. So let's do that. Peace. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, we'll be back in just a bit where we are going to thank one of our fine sponsors that makes out of five possible. <laughs> that's the way it rolls, right? That's, that's what we do here. Okay, while I go on to your system. Oh, hey, check that out. If you work with clients and colleagues to resolve computer issues, I have an incredible remote support tool that will make you look like a hero while saving you time and money and boosting productivity. GoToAssist Express, brought to you by Citrix, lets you easily resolve computer issues in real time or after hours while your customers are away from their computers, allowing you to be more productive. In fact, on average, GoToAssist Express users report a 40% increase in productivity. That's like getting two extra work days back a week. Hack5 viewers can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit GoToAssist.com slash Hack5. That's GoToAssist.com slash H-A-K-5 for a free trial. If you've got a creative idea or want to start a new business, I recommend getting a domain name and web hosting from Domain.com. Domain.com has the domain you want, fast, easy, and inexpensive. With free domain tools including URL and email forwarding, DNS management, and transfer lock. Their Linux-powered hosting plans are dependable, flexible, and affordable too. With free setup and no commitment required, their deluxe hosting offers unlimited bandwidth and site builder pages at a mere $8.75 a month. They even make it dead simple to get started with plenty of free software like WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, and more, all installed in just a few clicks. And as a Hack5 viewer, you get an extra 15% off your order when you check out with coupon code HAK5. Got a great idea? It all starts with a great domain. Domain.com. That just about wraps up this episode of Hack 5. But before we get going, we want to check in on your Technolust photo of the week. But first, Shannon, we've got some uh, feedback here? Mm, yes, we do, of actually. Of course. We always get so much. <laughs> Thank you for keeping it short, by the way. Yes. Really appreciate that. The short ones are so much easier to read. And a lot of times, I reply to those a lot more than I reply to the longer ones. Definitely. Especially if they're easy questions. <laughs> <laughs> I like easy. <laughs> All right, the first one is from Bazzer. He said, hey, Darren, what headset do you have? They look pretty sweet. OK, so I don't know if you guys remember from the E3 episode I did with Jen, but we checked out these sweet headphones from Knox Audio. And I got to say, I absolutely love these things. I, I immediately saw them and said, dude, I need to pick them up because they've got the, uh, the four conductor pin, right? Check those out. And uh, that's oh, the thing I love the most, oh, right? So that's you're just awesome. like. And then when, you're, when you don't need your gaming headset, you just ravel that right back up. And okay, I find that I actually cool. use it a ton on my cell phone because it's got the four conductor, but it also comes with a cable to break it out to left and right audio. And then, you know, so you twist this guy for that and then you twist this guy for the volume. And I've had them for um, a couple months now uh, since E3 and I love them. Yeah, they're good. Is the quality pretty good? Yeah, the quality is great. And I got to say, like, cool. you know, they're comfy. That's what I like about them the most. Yeah, my ears always get hurt from my big and headsets that I have at home. They're not rubbery is what I like. Oh. Yeah. oh, yeah, they're made out of a, oh, like yeah, a, they a are little really terry soft. cloth kind of thing going on. Nice. It's, it's nice. You might have to pick me up some of those. Yeah, they're not too I expensive. And, you know, so there, there's a real road test of some gear that's been working out for me. Thanks for writing <laughs> in. From Mark, he asked, what VNC client was Jason using on his MacBook Pro? Jason uses Chicken of the VNC, the most awesome VNC client for Mac. I'm serious. Really? It's, it's called Chicken of the Chicken of the VNC. Oh, that is kind of cute. Yeah. Well, Easy one. Thanks for sending that in. And our last question this week is, I need some help because I'm a younger viewer. I'm 13. I'm loving all the technolists on your show, and I have just one problem. I love the hacker community so much that it began to show in my personality. Uh, it does for all of us. 
And, well, I've tried to talk to my parents that I'm a hacker, and they were freaked out, they were scared, they told me I needed to quit because I'm going to go to jail. Oh, so I have to hide it. Oh, man, this is sad. So do you guys have any ways that I can break it to my parents? I've watched Hackers Are People too, and thought that would be a great show to show them. Although, with all the alcohol and the cussing and the sex jokes, that might stop them from getting the whole meaning. So I'm open, and I'm still a Lee hacker. That's from Zachary. Zachary, thanks. And, thanks. Oh. Yeah, we get emails like this Man, a lot, and, and it kills yeah. me. Zachary, embrace your technolust. It's not something to hide, and your, your parents just have this media misconception that's been been reinforced by mainstream media and it's totally wrong and Hackers Are People Too is a great documentary by Ashley Schwartow that, that tries to, to bring it to light but really I think for them you might be better off showing them more of the open source, more of the programming, you know, show them that you're going to be the next Bill Gates and you're going to be a bazillionaire yeah. because you know how to write a bash script or, or PHP or whatever it is that you're into, get into Python, it's good stuff. So, uh, so you know, maybe you should show them Revolution OS, it's a great documentary about the open source movement and listen, if you guys, the viewers, uh, have some suggestions for Zachary as well, we would love to hear what you suggest for oh. breaking it to the parents. It's like, you know, when you come out of the closet that and you let your parents know you're I, a hacker. There was a movie that I just saw. It was on torrents all over the place, and I just watched it the recently. The one that didn't come out because it was... The one that didn't come out. Yeah, we'll put it in the lower third. Yeah. But uh, everybody else, you know, if you've got suggestions as well, email us, feedback at hack5.org. We appreciate you keeping it short and sending us your love. Thank yes, you so thank much. Thank you so much. Now, I also want to remind you guys that if you want to follow all the crazy awesome fun stuff that Hack5 does, you can do it really easily by subscribing on Twitter and check out our Facebook. You can also get your Technolust delivered to you instantly, like Google Instant every oh, yeah. week just comes <laughs> over the pipe from iTunes and YouTube. So uh, go ahead and show your support there. Or if you want to show your support with your wallet, get yourself nicely clothed with Hack5 gear. You can do that over at hack5.org slash store. Shannon does a great job managing the Hack Shop. Oh, thank you. I've been, yeah, I've been trying my best to, you know, help everybody and be really good in customer service. I come from working at, like, well, you come from the service, service industry, management, yeah. So, like, customer service is big for me, and I try to do whatever I can to make my it's customers It's all about happy. keeping the customers happy, yeah. It if it's a Wi-Fi pineapple to Zimbabwe or just Or a, one of our brand new Hack 5 hoodies to Canada. To keep you <laughs> nice and snuggly and warm. So thank you so much for showing your support there. So I'm excited. What's your technology photo of the week? This one is from Operative. He hacked his HTC Droid 2, and he has a nice little Hack 5 sticker on it. Sweet. Yay. Well, hey, thanks for showing your support, HTC Droid 2. Pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. Android 2 with HTC. I thought that was Motorola. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> Thanks for rocking Android, supporting the uh, supporting the good guys. I'm like this iPhone girl over here. Hey, hey. I it know. does I'm what joking. I need. I'm it's really an Emacs Vi debate. I could care less. An iPad, <laughs> an Android tablet, who cares? Yeah. We're all <laughs> geeks here. It's all one big. I'm jailbreaking them anyway, so who, what does it matter? Yeah, I, can, I guess it doesn't. All right, well, anyway, with all of that, uh, thanks for tuning in. We will see you next week. As you guys know, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. And remember to trust your Technolust. Yay! So, hey, no, that's mine. What? No, no, I'm, no I want it. I want to play Asteroids. Asteroids? I want to play Asteroids. Hello, welcome back. I'm Amy Ryu. I'm 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 Ryu